Um, so, we are continuing through the three weeks, and last week we spoke about how um, lack of amuna or corrupted amuna uh, basically leads to galut, exile. And we understand that Eretz Israel itself, and we're going to go into this a little bit uh, today. Um, this is a sefer by uh, Rav Avram, uh, sorry, Rav Nachman of Shazin, the, uh, he's a third generation brass lover, student of Rav, Rav Natan. And uh, he put together this sefer on his book on explaining um, pieces of Lukuti Baran according to how they would line up with Eretz Yisrael. Um, meaning finding the idea of Eretz Yisrael in, each p- in, these, in particular pieces of Lukuti Baran, as well as um, collecting various components of Rabbi Nachman's teachings, Rabbi Nathan's teachings on Lukuti, um, sorry, on Eretz Yisrael. So, <coughs> As I said last week, we, we discussed this idea of a lack of Amuna being throw, throwing us out. I mean, it's, it's kind of a chain reaction, so to speak. Without Amuna, we don't believe in the possibility of changing Teva, changing nature. And without changing nature, it's without prayer. I mean, that's, that's the idea of prayer. Prayer changes, changes nature. I want to change the outcome. I want to change the um, decree, or I want to change whatever, which, let's call it the uh, established code of the universe. So we have something up above everybody, everything, everybody else or everything else is that we can actually change that order in the universe. And that's what a miracle is. So since the land of Israel thrives, it doesn't function the same way as a normal place. Since I don't be- if, I, if I can't bring myself to believe in my own capabilities to change the natural, what the so-called natural order of the universe, therefore I can't be an Eretz Israel. I can't be an Eretz Israel. So Eretz Israel is a, is, is, is a makom, it's a place of faith, it's a place of miracles, and basically it, it, it's, it's this foundational reality that, that you have to be in a certain uh, a level or a desire to be in a certain level to live here. Being here does something. Oh, we're about to find that out. Um, I think, you know, you know, deep down inside, somebody, you know, lives here, even if they're going to say, you know, they're going to argue this way and that way, or complain, like a lot of people do, about certain aspects of society here. Um, I, th- I think, you know, when they're on their, on their uh, outings and hiking, you know, I think they understand that they're they're not living in the same reality as other people. And, and by the way, those people who can't hack it, oftentimes they go and they move to America and they, they sell Dead Sea products on stands. I mean, it's true, it's true, right? So they they can't they can't hack it. You know, they they can't. It's not about like you know, those people. The, the world the world that we live in, we've discussed this many times, is about ups and downs. You know, like judging people where they're at that particular day isn't really the the purpose. Where they're in the bandwidth of their life, you know. When they go to the army, do they do something that's courageous? Where does that courageous thing come from? Like a gibor, right, is to be strong. Rabbi Nachman says uh, a true gibor, uh, someone who's a gibor is a gibor of their heart, right? The gibor is found in their, their, their givura, sorry, givur talev, the, the strength, uh, um, having a strong heart, standing up for the right thing. So oftentimes people here, even if they're not going to be full on, you know, quote unquote religious, they oftentimes do things that are above and beyond, uh, you know, the call of duty on, on many different occasions. Yeah. So, I think you know, and, and everybody has their ups and downs and, and, and their points where they have to work on. So, uh, and then the question is, does one want to be here? Like, why would you want to be here? Let's face facts. Other than like, you know, if you're like a Western a Tel Aviv, you know, like, but, but other than that, like, it's it's not an easy place to, even now with all the advancements in in, in, in the. Uh, and infrastructure changes and all sorts of different stuff, still not the easiest place to, to deal with, right? Um, like, why would you pick the one place in the whole world where everybody wants to fight, fight over if you didn't really believe that you should be here? Mm-hmm. And you didn't believe it was possible to actually make it through all the trials and tribulations that, that come with living here. So, I mean, that, that, that goes to Karen's question, like, what about those people that don't seem to believe, right? So, you know, what, what is belief? A belief is the ability to actually force yourself into a situation. We said before, like, do I believe I can change nature? Like, clearly you know, they do, right? So, to a certain extent. To a certain extent. I mean, like, extent. Sadiq, he met that a, a living outside of Israel. I mean, he really 
mm. of Hashem and pray and you, you have a heart, um, but they, for whatever reason, can't be living here. Mm. Even if they have a desire, like you said, if they, if they mm. want to be here, but they, Hashem has them somewhere mm. else for His purposes. Kisufin, right, desires, Rabbi Nachman teaches, is everything. Yeah. Someone can desire to be a better, a better person. Because they're already a better person. The desire itself the, is, the, mo, is, the, is yeah. the actual where, where they're at. And it's very hard to break through all these layers that they're struggling with. We're all struggling with, right? If I desire to, to pray better, or desire to have a better conversation, let's say with my spouse or my kids, or desire to be more joy, joyful, so the desire itself is enough for Hashem to, to put us over the finish line on anything that we're working on. You know, so coming to Eretz Israel, living in Eretz Israel, dealing with Eretz Israel is, is something that is, is uh, the desire to do that is, is enough already. Now, Tzadikim themselves, Tzadik Emet, the true Tzadik, right? An authentic Tzadik. Uh, let's just, their, their kever is, is according to Hasidu, it is, is, has the atmosphere of Eretz, is the land of Israel when you go to that kever, even if you're in Chutzlar. It's like an embassy of Eretz Israel that kind of hooks you back in, right? And even more so, I think, it's the, er, it's the Eretz Israel that's ideal. Right now, right now, the land of Israel, and then I've been going, going into today's lesson, yet the land of Israel is, is really an aspect of Canaan. It's really an aspect where we haven't yet... Um, uh, right, like pushed down or pushed back or restrained the forces of evil that came back at the same time that we did. Right, when we came back, forces, all these forces of evil kind of came back to stop us from completing the task, which has spun everything around on its head, which is why we're still, still dealing with these issues today. So the fact is, is Eretz Israel we live in now isn't, isn't a complete sort of ideal reality yet. In potential, it's there. But at Tzadik's kever, kever at Tzadik, even the Chafetz Chaim, the Shabru, who was, was a Chassid, he wrote that the, the, the actual atmosphere around the, is one of purity around the cover. Even if it's in like Poland or Ukraine or New York, right? So, it, you know, you actually feel as if you're in the Eretz Israel of redemption. Yeah. If you open your heart, right? Obviously, if you're close to one who has a closed heart, nothing really is going to help them. So, but let's see, the connection between Sadiq and, and Eretz Israel is very clear, um, especially in Brasil Chassid, that's very, that's very made out very, very clearly that, they, that there's sort of this, du- this like, dual relationship between the two. Uh, Israel, uh, 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 Israel David Esser, uh, one of the leaders of, of, of Brussels leaders from previous generations, says in his beginning of his letters to the president back then of, of Israel that the Sadiq, the, the, the Sadiq the Sadiq allows us to expand the borders of the, uh, of the land of Israel. He kind of gives us the ability to expand them. Right. So, what this means, I'm not going to go into that part, but the idea that there is an inter- integral part, integral uh, relationship between the Sadiq Emet, the foundational Sadiqim of the world, and the land of Israel is very, very clear. It's very clear. So, this is in this Torah, this Rabbi Nachman is speaking about. Um, when the spies did not want to go into the land of Israel. And we understand that, that this moment leads to the destruction of their temples. It leads to basically the exiles. So it's already kind of, pre, kind of written into the script when they kind of don't want to go in. Right? It was all kind of built in already. <clears throat> and what's going on? So Rabbi Nachman says, Eretz Ochelet Yoshvea, right? The, a land that consumes those who dwell in it. It's a very famous line when one draws close he's going to change change this around or go deeper into it when one draws close to the tzaddik even if he doesn't get anything from the tzaddik he goes to the tzaddik he looks at him or desires to be close to him there's other Torahs on this and he, okay, he goes home it doesn't seem like he got anything out of it who gam kein tov mod? He's also very good. The emuna levada, shemamim betzadik, and faith alone, shemamim betzadik, the one that believes in the tzadik, moyot laavodat ashemi barach. It'll help him to serve a kodesh baruch hu, help him to serve the Creator. Emuna, this is very famous. Emuna chachamim, faith in the sages. 
is part and parcel, our, 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 it's a necessity in Judaism. Because we have to believe in this sort of chain of, of knowledge, God consciousness that's being handed from Moshe Rabbeinu down to, even Avraham Avinu, all the way down to now. Right? So Emunat HaTzadik is even deeper than that. Because the Tzadik is above the Lamdan. We've gone over this, I think, before, maybe, that, maybe a different class. The Tzadik is above the Lamdan. The Lamdan is someone who's very learned, he's a, he's a sage. The Tzadik is already tra- has transitioned beyond that into actualizing the learning itself into the reality that we live in. And so the one who has, one who has believes in the Tzadik what does he believe in the tzaddik? I mean, he believes in the path of the tzaddik. Okay? Because the tzaddik and his path are one of the exact same thing. And the tzaddik's no longer here, physical. How many tzaddikim? They're not here. They have a path that we're supposed to be going on. So that path of the tzaddik is the same thing. Because the tzaddik is above our conception of what a human being should be like. They're not dealing with the same issues. They're trying to blaze a path forward for Am Yisrael, and even really all mankind, and they're not really thinking about themselves in the same way. And so that path stays after they go. And that's really who they are. And so, and so one who draws close to the tzaddik, one who believes in the tzaddik, i.e. the tzaddik's path, it helps him to serve, that's how, that's how he serves Hashem. That's how it serves Hashem. Kiteva achi, now as I explain, Kiteva achila sha mazon mitapech lanizon. The nature of food that is consumed, it flips to the thing which consumes it. No? You eat a cookie, the cookie becomes part of you. And the cookie now is part of Ken. Or maybe, maybe apples, I don't know, I don't know. beer. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Only because Ken and I, when we had a beer together, uh, he said how much he loved beer. So, uh, um, so too, when a, a cow eats a uh, plant. Um, and so too, when a cow eats a plant. Kugon asavim, for example, grass, mitabchin asavim lechai, they actually become part of the living creature which consumes them. Their, their nature is transformed. Pretty clear, right? When they, when they enter into it, the cow's intestine. So when we shut the cow, we eat the cow, we also are consuming, we as the medaber, the speaking, speaking creature, we are uplifting, we are taking that cow, or whatever the animal is, and when we consume it, it actually becomes part of us. On a side note, so Bob Shari explains the, the Indian of kashrut, right? When you eat something that's not kosher, it actually, it, unlike other mitz, other, other is serene, it actually affects you because you're consuming this, not this traif, this garbage thing to yourself. <clears throat> it changes that thing which you're consuming goes into your body and every place where it goes to, wherever it goes to, it becomes transformed into that thing. So we have to be careful what we eat. Kigon ha-chelech mehamazon ha-niknas lemoach. For example, uh, food that goes into the brain, yitapech lemoach, actually becomes part of the brain. Ha-niknas lelev, becomes part of the heart. Yitapech lelev, right? Becomes part of the heart. Bechain, the Shar Evir, and all the other different uh, organs of the body and limbs. Let's <laughs> <laughs> start dating class with Kronir Yogan Achman. Zehu Eretz Ochelet Yoshvea. Ki Eretz Hu Bechinat Amuna. And this is the, this is the land which, which consumes its inhabitants because the land is an aspect of Amuna. Um, the one who dwells the dweller of the land and the uh, um, shepherd of faith the one 
what happens is the ones um, who are consumed, when do they become consumed? When they go into the land. They're already getting a picture here. The, 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 the spies did not want to be consumed by the land. If it's the land of Amuna, what were they lacking? Amuna, right? We just went through this whole thing of exile is the idea of lack of Amuna, which means I'm no longer consumed by the land. We, we read it as consumed its inhabitants. It's a bad thing. We're not just flipping it around. You understand? Usually when I get consumed by something, it's not a good thing. Yeah. Consumed by a good thing. It could be, part become it. part of it. Yeah. That is, it flips around its um, um, uh, who it is, right? I mean, who it is, who, 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 what something is, right? It's, it's, a, it's reality. It's, it's a existence. It flips around its actual identity. Sorry, Mahut's identity. It flips around the identity. This is a deep part. Three lines, four lines, a very deep part here. I'm going to translate and I'm going to try to go over it and understand it. He just went to the Tzadik and not Eretz Israel, but he compared the Tzadik and Eretz Israel. Okay? And he says this. When you go into Eretz Israel, you become consumed by the land, i.e., the Amuna in the land. You become part, you, you actually are becoming part of the Amuna of the land itself. It means your whole entire existence, your reality, and who you are, your identity becomes changed just by dwelling here. And so too, he says, so too, when you're attached to the tzaddik, like we went up above, when you're attached to the tzaddik, how can you serve Hashem better? Because your entire reality. Or who you are, your identity, becomes subsumed in the path of the tzaddik. You become part of the path, or the song of the tzaddik, so to speak. The song of the tzaddik. The tzaddik and the song are the same idea. We got, there's many of the Torahs in, in, in the the song and the tzaddik are the same. The song of the tzaddik and the tzaddik is the same idea. So, because the tzaddik can reach to a level of nigun, of song, that we can't reach to. And he brings that song into the universe, and we can actually understand that frequency and become subsumed by it, then we actually become one with his song himself. And therefore, the pathway that we're supposed to be on, right, and each one like has our own path, so to speak, our own notes in the set of notes of the tzaddik, actually opens up for us. It's not that we need the tzaddik to complete who we are. We're already complete, we just don't realize it. And therefore, the tzaddik, by being davek to the tzaddik, we change our mahut, who we are, to who we really are. It's not that, oh, uh, well, I hear he's here and I'm here and I need him to get to Hashem. It's not, it doesn't work that way. We're already attached to Hashem. We just don't realize it. We're automatically attached to Hashem. We just haven't took, taken the time to listen to our own song yet. So, so the Salik has a song that is kolel, encompasses everybody else. And therefore, by, what's that song? The song of Amuna. Right, so it's or Geula or, or, or Eretz Israel, or, you know, you can all put it the same, same concept together, the same idea together. And therefore, he's saying, listen, just like when you go to Eretz Israel, your Mahut, who you are, changes, your DNA, so to speak, your cosmic DNA changes. So too, when you're Davek to the Sadiq, his path, his song, his advice, and you, you become very attached to it. Who you are changes. Now I'm inserting the idea because it makes sense of uh, according to our other Ogunavans, other teacher, who you are, what does it mean who you really are? That's who you really are. You can't get there because we're all clogged up in this world that we live in. Vachin. Yeah, that's, that's, no, 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 it's not, definitely not escape. This is not like, I've used this much like a nice, like, you know, candy that like, tastes good. Or like, oh, there's like the red shiny object over there. And I'm going to put all my emphasis on the red shiny object. We're not, we're not doing that. That, that. That's not, no, Dafka, you, you, you have to stay in the world. Because really, it's no, the world itself is really just an image, an expression of the Creator's will, right? So like, we can look at the world many ways. 
But the idea isn't to run away from the world. The idea is to understand what's happening to me while I'm here. And so I can better achieve who I really am. And by doing that, then I actually bring peace to the world, my own like, pathway. But you need to be somewhat detached from the, the stuff of the world, from the, the trappings, to really be effective, right? Right, that might be yeah, yeah. This is the struggle everybody, everybody has, right? It's like how much you take from the world. I'm not talking about eating, right? Although that's part of it. But like, you know, how much do we interact with these things that we're like, you know, don't want to really interact with? Uh, in Hasidut, you know, you can find a Chabad Hasidut, you can find Breslov also, or Rav it's a Bender, previous generation, has a whole whole... Uh, a whole lecture on birorim clarification that our job really here isn't just to it's obvious when we eat treif it's obvious right that it says it clearly in the Torah but what about the things that are mixed together like I don't mean like food I mean like ideas and concepts and you know smartphones and, 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 and computers and I don't know what, what not you know cars even music to a certain extent the Rimbaf is very clear that you know there's non-kosher music and we gotta stay away from it but if you have to interact with it, there's a way to deal with it. Okay, uh, how to rectify it. But the, the idea is that we are Biorim's clarifications. We are in this world to do certain things. With that being said, it's a very the, as the world becomes crazier and crazier because we're at the end, and it's really all over the place now because this is, the, this is really a, a test of clarification for all of us. So there's things that we really should not be interacting with. Not because they're totally bad, because it's very hard to find clarification and the good and the bad mixed. And that's, that's, that's the idea. Um, which, which, may, which, is why that's, which is why the emphasis of following a tzaddik towards the end becomes very important. Because, you know, it's, as I said, it's not a red shiny object, but it does help us clarify our position here, and our path here. Um, and one more thing about... Um, and we start the Shirim on the Lost Princess. I'll go into this a little more. But the idea of the Lost Princess, when, when the, the vice or the second camp can gets to the castle of the Loto, what does he do? He goes, walks around, he gets right in. He's a whole huge party. You know, woo, party out. What does he do? It's the most wild part. You know, people overlook it. He tastes food from the party and then goes, lays down. What's Rabbi Nachman teaching us there? That, that you have to interact with the world. Just don't get consumed by it. Mm-hmm. Don't get to the point where you lose track of what we call a tachot, a tachlis, the purpose of the whole thing. Because that's what most people are doing now. Most people are becoming enamored by the, let's call it, for better or less, the um, simulation, the, the illusion, the creation, whatever like the only descriptive force you want on the reality that we live in, they're getting pulled into it and they think that's all there is. Because it tasted too much. But you have to know how to interact with people. You can't like, you know, our job is to spread light. The ones who are awake, our job is to spread light. To everybody, right? So if that's their job, then we have to know what we're doing. We can't just sit there, oh, you're not on deal with it. People have to get married, they have to have kids, right? They have to feed them, they have to work. They have to do those things. They have to taste from the food, so to speak, right? But not too much. Because if you too much, what happens is the lost princess inside goes, this is the place of the low toe. If you've reached the wrong, you please, you're going to get caught up in here, you have to move. If you want to get me out of here, you got to get out. But we know those, you know, ones who are people who are awake understand the, where they're hitting. Eretz Yisrael has this koach, has this power, right, to subsume those who are in it. He doesn't have any, he, he settled out any sin. He's explaining how can how Am is the, anybody who dwells in Eretz Israel doesn't have any sin. 
explain it. Ki hi eretz ochel yashvea. It's a land which consumes the ones who dwell in it, right? Shayoshev sham neechal etzla inapech lemehuta hakodesh. This is a, this is like, you know, you can say Rav Kook got it from this. You know, it's like, right? The, the one who dwells in Eretz Israel, just like the food we talked about before in the Tzadik, the one who dwells in Eretz Israel, flips to an, ide- I, I, a, an existence of a holy existence. His identity becomes holy. Wow, huh? Karen's like, I don't understand. How do the people in Tel Aviv? What are people down the street? What are people in this building? There's people doing... Okay. Now says, even someone who just goes for Amot, because he's quoting the Gomorrah, it says, just for Amot, you're done. Now, we know this very famous line from Rabbi Nachman. Everybody knows it. Then when he got here, and his, and his trip, which got a lot, through a lot of obstacles to get here, he got here, he, he goes for Amot, he tells his assistant, let's go home. <laughs> what? I got what I needed here. And he commits in this day. They went to Tiberia. And you didn't get to Jerusalem. Right? Didn't get to Jerusalem. Yeah. Neither Rabbi Nata, neither Rabbi Nassan. son came into Yerushalayim and Hebron. Yeah. Fascinating enough. There's some nice letters about it that he wrote to Batis, Batis the Kila, about his time in. Uh, in Hebron, which is pretty wild. Proves, it proves a lot of, you know, anecdotally, by the 1840s, and he's already, you know, you know it's, but it's, just, it's a side, but, but uh, you know, he, he uh, uh, yeah, so, he, you know, Rabbi Nachman lived that. And he ended up staying out, as I said, but, but uh, <laughs> and he says all the Torah he gave over before he got to Eretz Israel is null and void. He had a new neshama, and he, he, you know, every, all the all the, to- the Torah is uh, different now. So, hey, there's stories about Cook. He came and he he, he, he had a whole different uh, change. Yes, he said it was like he was just being born. Born, yeah. When you were doing that, pretty wild. Yeah. Pretty wild. But what's that that verse that talks about the land can burn you up? Well, he's going to talk about that. Oh, he is, okay. Because it's, uh. the whole I get consuming and eating and becoming hot, and then suddenly... That's right. Yeah. That's right. Which, which, you know, the further thing, you know, we, we've we learned, uh, Simon to Rish paid Beth before, about Zamra, and seeing the Kudot talk about good points in people. The idea of what's really going on here is we don't really understand it, what it means to be Kodesh, to, I mean, let's put it this way. It clearly, it means to live a holy existence, according to the Torah, and, but, but wherever, people's, wherever people are at, that's where they're at. So the Shema might have to come down in a particular situation in Eretz Israel and, and be rectified in a certain way. We don't really understand it. Um, and, and at the end of the days, we understand even this issue here might be covered over. I mean, think about before the, the, the Zionist movement, who was living here, Jewish wise. Oh, it's a deacon. Oh, really? You have to be crazy to live here. In malaria, you have you have the poor people. You have the Turks. You have the, you have the Arabs marauding around. It's it's not such a safe place. Sadiqim were living here. And, you know, I don't want to go into politics, but that's the tug of war between the, the secular Zionist movement and the and let's just say the what they call the Yeshuv Yeshan, the old the old Yeshuv that was here before the Zionists. That was the tug of war. But this is a Makum Kod. This is this is a place where the, your Existence, your identity, who you are, your your cosmic DNA gets flipped over to uh, uh, something that's kodesh, so it's holy. And so, you know, you basically have a geula in here. When when when, when Cook says that Eretz Israel itself is geula, that's what he's talking about. Here, Rabbi Nachman saying it. He's saying your mahut. That's what geula is. You go from a, a an, an exilic concept of God to a geula concept of God, a redemptive concept of your life. That's what Kodesh is. Kedusha is. Your God consciousness is expanding when you're here. Ah, it's hard? Okay. So there's challenges. I should make it so easy at the end of the day so we can see it clearly, right? That'd be too, that'd be too easy. But, but that's what I'm not saying. You become transformed. Your identity becomes transformed to a redemptive person when you're here. 
וזהו גם כן עניין המבואר במקום אחר. אני חושב שאני אקספלין את זה על הפלט, מקור הבעליה מרעים לאכול את בצהריי, שכלל עניין שם. כשאני רוצה שיקרבו תרעין רעין דלו מפרשן, אני צריך לאכול את בצהריי. It's consuming the meat. Hani le'achnia ha'chomer. Because here is where you write, hold back the physicality. Zehu le'achol et b'serai le'achol daika, meaning consume. What does it? What does that mean over there? He says consuming meat. No, consuming really does mean consuming. That that this physicality we're living in becomes consumed. שצריך שהנפש תאכל בלב הבשר שיתהפך למהותו. זהו איכלו רעין. היינו תרעין רעין דלא מפרשן. אני אעשה את זה קצת. אוקיי? צריך לנמוך ודעת הקודש יאכל את הגוף. Just, you should explain this now, that our holy consciousness in the brain is necessary for it to consume the goof, the body. דהיינו שהגוף יתהפך למהותו לנשמה הקדושה. Where is the נשמה? Here and here. So for, for in order for us to transform ourselves, it has to be that our soul is consuming our physical selves, so to speak. שהוא המוח והדעת שזהו בכי נחילה, שמאזון נתאבל ניזון. זהו. שכן ארץ, we said this over ארץ, the dweller of the land, הוא ראה אמונה, and the shepherd of faith. היינו שאתה תהיה רואה ומאזין את אמונה. That you will be a shepherd, and you will be, be sustained, and you will sustain a muna. Haynu shetia neachol la muna bechinat hamazon shetabech benizon. The more you more muna that you consume, the more you become flipped over to a muna. Or sorry, more that your muna actually becomes part of you. Once again, this is a land of a muna. And this land has this power that it subsumes whoever's here. Or actually, it consumes them. Sorry, it consumes them. It's just, and the amuna of the land itself is consuming us. We become amuna after a while. We become so filled with amuna, which means that's how, that's kedusha, right? Kedusha and amuna really are the same thing. The more amuna I have, the more, more I live in a world of kedusha. Ach. <laughs> אף על פי כן העיקר תלוי ברצון. אם רצונו הזך מאוד יתקרב והשם יברך לעבוד אותו, this answers Karen's earlier question. And nevertheless, we just went through this, you know, we're not going through this whole thing, אמונה, and this flips the מהות, someone's identity over to identity of Kedusha. אך, yet, אף על כן, nevertheless, העיקר תלוי ברצון. Everything is dependent upon the, on one's will. What's רצון? רצון is נפש. So one's soul. And one's will is the same thing, right? Im ratzono chazak mo'odi karev ha'shem yibrach la'avod oto. That if his will is very, very strong to draw close to Hashem and serve Him, rak shikashe lo lishbor ha'tavod gufo. And the only thing that's left is just really harder to, to break through these sort of um, desires of one's body. Which means he has a, he has a ratzon tov. Right, he 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 wants to serve Hashem, she wants to serve Hashem, but and, and the Ratzon is there. They really really want to serve Hashem. Okay, they're in uh, Tel Aviv. Heck, they're in Yushalayim at, at a nightclub. I don't pick on Tel Aviv all the time. They're in Yushalayim at a nightclub, and they're doing things they're not supposed to do. But deep down inside, they really have a Ratzon tov. So Hashem understands that the Ratzon. Once again, the Ratzon, kisufin, the desire to be with Hashem is the whole thing. The rest Hashem understands. Hey, I put your soul in this world. It's a tough place. So what's the mahut of Kedusha that Rabbi Nathan is talking about? It's the Ratzon. When I get to Eretz Yisrael, when I live in Eretz Yisrael, I have a different Ratzon than I do in New York or Australia. My Ratzon, okay, it's the same culture as being imported from there to here. My Ratzon is different. I really want to be better today. Sure, it's hard. As I had the carvut, the Muna, had Siddiquim, who became a Hila and a Hala Sadek, and 
the more he desires to be draw close to the tzaddikim, he'll be consumed by the tzaddik. Hainu shitapech lemahuto knal ach im in rutsono klala avod at Hashem. That to ach im in in rutsono klala avod Hashem. However, if he has no will to serve Hashem, lo yo'il lo shum hikarvul at tzaddikim. But if he has no will to serve Hashem. Then no matter how no matter how close he draws to the side, they won't uh, it won't work. This was the this is against the idea of the red shiny object, right? Mm-hmm. Like I can't just go to Rabbi Nachman's kever and like punch it, my world will change. I can't go to Martha Mapela and go, oh wow, it's just amazing. I just feel I'm good now. But I don't really want to, I don't want to, I don't want to I don't want to serve Hashem. I don't want to like like we. I just need to touch the touch the side of the cover. I'm okay. My sins are absolved. Doesn't work that way. We're not. This is a world of asiyah. It's a world of doing. We're sent down here for a journey. That journey is self development. To work on ourselves. The Rabbi Nachman says like, listen. If you don't want to serve Hashem, no matter how much you want, you you, you kind of like follow the tzaddik around and do whatever you're supposed to be doing. It ain't gonna help you. I ain't gonna help you. You had to develop yourself. He, he didn't flip over. He didn't become like a, 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 he didn't become one with the thing which consumed him. The food. It's like eating a bunch of I don't know, like Skittles. They didn't go down right. Didn't digest. Kigon im ochel chilash in hateva sovel oto. He eats food and he, he can't he can't stomach it. He doesn't even digest it. It doesn't turn into him. Raka goof mekia oto. His body throws it up. So that goes back that's the right? Kane who zo mamash. This is exactly what we're talking about, he says. Ki He's not consumed by the sadik at all. He doesn't become one with the tzaddik. Tzaddik throws him out. Av shemakor v'etzlo ki tzaddik eno yachol lispo umeki oto. The tzaddik is not able to actually sw- consume him, so to speak, right? Include him, subsume him into his his into his pathway, and he gets tossed out. That could be an automatic reaction even from his own son. Could be. Who bechinet a katuv beretz Israel kasher ka'a et agoy? So Karen said, asked about this. Uh, you asked about this question, right? This is a land. It'll, it'll throw out. It'll um, throw up or throw out the nation. It's not able. The land is not able to stomach the inhabitants, and therefore. They didn't get turned. Their their um, actual identity don't, does never get flipped over mm-hmm. to one which is you know holy. Raki makia oto Hashem yetsuvenu Hashem Hashem should save us. Right, the land tosses them out. Okay, the land and the tzaddik is the same. Is the interrelated concepts here. And uh, once uh, once again, Rabbi Nachman Rabbi says, listen, one's rat. It's all about ratzon. It's all about kisuf. Someone's kosef for a Kodesh Baruch Hu, someone desires to serve a Kodesh Baruch Hu, it's all good. Hashem understands the world's a tough world. What Eretz Yisrael does is, is it consumes its inhabitants, meaning our Ratzon. It says, listen, that Ratzon that's driving you in Chutzlars, it's not going to exist here. You're going to be something different here. Mm-hmm. Ah, okay. Chutzlarts, which means the gashmut and all the physicality that you're draining back here. I understand it's tough. It's not easy. I threw out for 2,000 years. Oh, not only that, you're in a I've tossed down to the world. It's not an easy place. So I get that part. But your Ratzon is different here. One's Ratzon, they want to serve Hashem here. And if they don't, eventually they'll leave. Eventually they'll leave. You can go one more, you know, a few more steps here. One who's 
either they're drawn close to the tzaddik or they're drawn close to Eretz Yisrael. Pitam, they want to come to Eretz Yisrael. They don't know why they want to come to Eretz Yisrael. How many, how many kids that is? You know, they want to come to Eretz Yisrael. They're religious. They want to come to Eretz Yisrael. They're desiring their Hashem is pulling them back. They're, 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 they're longing for the Bas Malach and they understand that you know, the Bas Malach is in the grounds of Eretz Yisrael itself, right? It's in the Shechina Kedosha. The Holy Shechina is actually part of Eretz Yisrael. It's just not activated yet. And it's like lost here. We're lost trying to find it. And so we're drawn back to ourselves here, who we really need to be here. We want to flip over our Ratzon to a holy Ratzon. We just don't understand it. And the Tzadik is the same thing. I need a guide. I'm in this world. I'm like lost without a guide. And I know I'm not who I really am supposed to be. I'm totally uh, off the charts. I'm doing all these things, God forbid. So as soon as one longs to be with the Tzadik, or longs to be in Eretz Israel, and, the, and like I said, they're the same concept. It's about changing a mahut and a someone's existence to a holy existence. A ratzon, a will to be better, to self-develop, to leave behind the traumas of exile. So we should, uh, we should be blessed to uh, come there to Israel for real.